Welcome to Jobbed Out, the wrestling editorial that reminds you that if you work hard, stay loyal, and hustle, you can bully your way to the top. I could have talked about this a couple weeks back when the rumors had come out about the British Bulldog going into the WWE Hall of Fame, but I just really don't like JBL. I mean, he doesn't like me either. I don't even remember what led to being blocked on Twitter. I think I made fun of Michael Cole in 2013. Anyway, tonight on WWE Backstage, as well as via the WWE on Fox Twitter account, John Bradshaw Layfield is the latest confirmed name to be inducted to the WWE Hall of Fame. He joins Batista, the NWO, and the Bella Twins. Other names that were leaked but haven't been confirmed yet are Jushin Thunder Liger and the earlier mentioned Davey Boy Smith. So let's talk a bit about Bradshaw. He joined the WWF in 95 as Justin Hawk, and then later Justin Hawk Bradshaw. He wasn't over. He formed the new Blackjacks with Barry Windham, where he wasn't over. Back to solo work, and he wasn't over, but he ditched the Justin. There was the Brawl for All, where he started turning some heads, losing in the finals to Bart Gunn in a competition that neither he nor Gunn were even supposed to contend in. He was abducted by the Undertaker's Ministry, along with Farouk, became the Acolytes, and it was here things started to change. He and Farouk shouldn't have, but totally did start building their cred right here. They were fast, they were strong, they were hard-hitting. They were to the late 90s what the Road Warriors were in the 80s. After splitting off from the Ministry, they became the Acolyte Protection Agency. Just a couple of rough Southerners who drank beer and took commission jobs. They had some cool moments too, like when Taka Michinoku needed their help in order to challenge for the WWF title. The APA were split off by the WWE draft in 02, where Creative tried to make it work for Bradshaw. He was, for a short period of time, Raw's new shiny babyface. And he was over. It finally happened, man. And then he tore his biceps and went on the IR for half a year. In 03, Bradshaw re-emerged, this time on SmackDown, teaming up once again with Ron Simmons, who at this point finally dropped the Farouk name, and they were over. One, because they were still very good, especially compared to the newer teams like the Bashams or La Resistance. But more importantly, they were a relic from the Attitude Era, which at this point were really sorely missed. It was the next year, though, when Farouk was kayfabe fired by GM Paul Heyman and Bradshaw finally hit his stride. He dropped the Texan gimmick, and now he was a stock market mogul. Something that should have been far-fetched if he in real life wasn't a financial advisor, and was at the time regularly featured on CNBC. And the fans? hated his ass. They hated him so, so very much because this isn't Bradshaw. This was a cowardly big clown from New York City. New York City! Jake, it's time you switch brands. <laughs> who loved to tell people he was richer than them. But they stuck with it. He had an amazing feud with Eddie Guerrero that served to build even more heat because fans weren't ready to see Eddie lose. He had a hilarious feud with The Big Show. He put John Cena on the map. He embraced how badly people did not want to see him, and he made the babyfaces all look really strong and capable, unlike his Reign of Terror counterpart on the other brand. JBL became top tier. Then he retired. He pursued other things like literally climbing mountains. But most importantly, he went away. Because distance makes the heart grow fonder, I guess. JBL, who had already dabbled in commentary in the mid-2000s, came back in 2012, and he was over. He was actually embraced rather well. Fans were absolutely miserable having to listen to Michael Cole and Jerry Lawler every week, the latter of which had a heart attack on Raw, so no story there, by the way. That happened. JBL was a different voice, though. He was new mannerisms, different cliches. He would actually sprinkle in other references to the past or tidbits that made him seem fresh for a while. He did, however, get very old very fast, and I'll tell you, I do not miss JBL on commentary. So there, there's most of the good things I have to say about JBL. Now for the other things. He was a notorious bully. He had been in the WWE since the mid-90s, so just like The Undertaker, he was untouchable backstage, and he used that power to be an absolute dick to people, especially new talents. He ridiculed Joey Styles until he got knocked the fuck out by a free punch. He sexually harassed and, according to some, sexually assaulted Edge. He took liberties on the Blue Meanie in 05, which are even more compounded if you listen to the One Night Stand alternate commentary, where his drunk ass spends way too much time specifically calling Meanie out. 
He was recorded to have told Justin Roberts to kill himself every single day. He forced Palmer Cannon to walk out on his brand new job. He pissed off an entire nation by goose-stepping and doing Nazi salutes for cheap heat before later on admonishing Chris Jericho for doing a similar but arguably less offensive thing in Brazil. I'm gonna have to talk about that one in a new video, actually. And of course, there was the Mauro Ranallo incident. So yeah, JBL's a piece of shit. And if you tell him that, he'll block you on Twitter. So knowing the good and knowing the bad is JBL Hall of Fame worthy and I hate to say it because, you know, he's a piece of shit, but yeah, yeah, he is Hall of Fame worthy. He was the top bad guy when they needed a new top bad guy. You know, Brock and Rock were both gone. He's been very versatile. He's accomplished a lot, and while he's done many, many, many shitty things, Vince McMahon likes him. And many of those things, they're not cancel culture worthy, especially not in 2005. The old guard look at what JBL did as a way to filter out the weak, you know, to get rid of the ones that weren't dedicated to the business, and I don't agree with it, and I'd be very happy if people reminded JBL of this over and over and over about these things on the daily, but... The man was, at one point, a record-breaking WWE Champion. Like it or not, he's going into the WWE Hall of Fame unless it turns out he killed someone. I mean, Hulk Hogan used the N-word in a sex tape and he just got a couple years off. JBL literally kicked Mexicans off the border. So, yeah, JBL is Hall of Fame bound. For real this time though, not like in 2016 when his name was leaked with a bunch of others and they scrambled to change it up. So I've got to challenge you viewers here. One good thing and one bad thing you remember about the career of John Bradshaw Layfield. I only ever really remember seeing him live once. He beat up little Guido on SmackDown and he got obliterated by John Cena after the show went dark in 05. Tell me your favorite and least favorite JBL moments in the comments section. For now though, I better get my shoulders off the mat. So thank you for tuning in to Jobbed Out. I'll catch you next time.